Henry now and has been someone important to me. Um, I was at L'Arche in the early 70s in Edmonton and then after a few years needed to leave the community. It was a very difficult passage. I think I was really experiencing loneliness. I actually took a course up at um, the seminary north of uh, Edmonton. Ron Rollheiser taught a course and on the curriculum was a book by Henry Nowen, Reaching Out. And that just spoke exactly to where I was, just experiencing loneliness. And he talked about that transformation from loneliness to solitude. And Henry was really good in connecting. And because of that, he, he could be in my other worlds too, the business world and the other worlds that I have. But where we connected mainly was on flowers and beauty, because he loved beauty. Henry, for a time, was my spiritual director. We became friends, um, but at one point, I said to him, Henry, you're as screwed up as I am. And he said, absolutely, probably more so. <laughs> and that was Henry. It's not often that we meet someone whom everyone says is easy to speak with, who's always truly present to you, and who seems to understand exactly what you're feeling. Still, that's what everyone says about Henry Nouwen. He's also described as one of the greatest spiritual thinkers of our time. Henry Nouwen was a Dutch Catholic priest. He was a professor, an author, and for the last 10 years of his life, he lived here in Canada, in Richmond Hill, Ontario, at the L'Arche Daybreak Community. And joining me today are two people who lived with Henry at L'Arche, Sister Sue Mosteller and Joe Egan. Welcome, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, Joe, I, th I hear that you're responsible for bringing Henry to L'Arche. Tell me about that. Well, it's a long story. I mean, Jean <laughs> Vanier really was okay. responsible. He yes. invited uh, Henry to a L'Arche retreat and to visit in L'Arche Trolley in France, yes. the original community. And then uh, on behalf of the Daybreak community, I wrote to Henry and said, we really would love you to come be our priest, be our pastor. That's great. And, um, and Henry said yes. Had you met him before? Or? I just met him very briefly, briefly. at this L'Arche retreat. It was yes. in Chicago, and I was asked to go to the airport to pick him up. What was Because that like? I was from Chicago and knew okay. how to get to our hair and not get, <laughs> not get lost and find right. Henry. And, um, and so it was a very simple kind of a meeting. And, um, yeah, I can't even remember what we talked about. But. Right now, Sue, you were you were already living at Daybreak when Henry I was. Arrived? I was living at Daybreak, and we were part of the group that was saying, "Let's invite him because oh, it'd be great to have him." As Do you our remember? Pastor. Do you remember when you first met him, or when he arrived? I remember. I met him prior to this. I met him in uh, about four years before that. I was giving a talk in Providence, Rhode Island, yeah. and he was at the same conference giving talks, and I just thought to myself. You know, we had this issue at uh, L'Arche Daybreak because we wanted to be a Christian community. Uh -huh. We had many denominations and people from other uh, faiths that weren't Christian. And we wanted to really have a spiritual community. We didn't want to water it all down, right. but we were having trouble on how to worship together. Mm. So I thought, I'll just ask this man because he was a theologian and so on, if he has any ideas. And I just remember we had a wonderful conversation and he said this is a it's a beautiful reality actually when Christians and others come together and so uh, he said now let's stay in touch and and, and we yes. did that so um, I knew him a little bit prior to I'd been corresponding with him for a couple of years uh -huh. now I've heard I mean I've heard so many stories but people people say that he was a little scattered <laughs> that he was okay so I guess it's true that he was a little disheveled I mean we've seen his video I've seen him on video and, and pictures um, do you, are there any particular stories that stand out for you? I well, mean, the, the, the first story is the day he arrived, which was <laughs> with a whole entourage, a caravan of cars and people, a very large yellow moving truck, because Henry moved all his possessions up to Daybreak. I've heard about the and, yellow moving and, truck. And yeah. uh, it all kind of rolled into the Daybreak property, and I just thought, what the hell are we getting in for here? <laughs> um, and that's how he arrived. Uh, the, the next day he went to Richmond Hill and bought himself a car. He needed a car. The next day he crashed that car, oh. totaled it. 
went back to the car dealer, <laughs> bought a second car, <laughs> and I think, oh boy, we're, we're, in for a, we're in for a real treat here. Oh, that's great. And you, Sue, do you have any memories? Yes, I have really good <laughs> memories of the early days. We were sort of knocked out because most people came to Daybreak with a backpack. Right. So you can only imagine our surprise when all these right. people, and of course Henry thought that we could invite them all to stay overnight and to have dinner in our homes and everything, but we weren't very prepared. So. Okay. But the other thing I remember, and, and this I think is, is beautiful, because when we did get together the first time with him as the pastor asking us now, how do we proceed? What, is the, what are the questions? And we talked to him about the problem that we had, mm -hmm. we couldn't worship together. We were always hurting somebody. We didn't know how to worship. And if we, if we worshiped in one tradition, then another tradition was upset and, yes. and so on. And it was such a problem. And he listened for, I would say, you know, three quarters of an hour or so. And then we waited and he said, I wonder if we change the word problem and said gift. Mm -hmm. Then we would unwrap this gift that God has given us by bringing us all together and we would see all the, yes, the difficulties and the painful things, but we'll see the gift of every, every tradition and mm -hmm. we can learn to appreciate one another's traditions. Yeah. And that was the beginning of our journey. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yes. What a gift. The yeah. gift what instead gift. of the yeah. problem. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's a good paradigm for Henry himself because he was very gifted, mm -hmm. but he had some challenges <laughs> to live community. So right. it's hard to imagine the, um, the transition from the culture of Harvard University to the culture right. of L'Arche. That's right. And he really struggled in that first year. <laughs> I mean, he good. couldn't make himself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You yeah, know? I've heard and, that too. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so living community, he wanted it. He really was looking for a home, looking for a community, but his uh, ability to live at least initially, yeah. um, he had a few bumps. Yeah. Now this past summer, the summer of 2016, all of us were actually part of a conference that was celebrating Henry Nouwen because it's the 20th anniversary of his death. And at the conference, many people were there, like the two of you who knew Henry, but there were also a lot of people who were there who only knew Henry through his writings, and we had the chance to speak to a few of them, and here's what they had to say. Reading Henry Nouwen was like being introduced to yourself. You know, like a lot of times, we have complexities inside of us, and that you're not always given permission even to admit you know, so it's kind of, some says, well, your life should be simple. When you pretend it isn't, it's not. You know, we're deeply complex people inside of ourselves, and now one was able to articulate that, and articulate it in such a way that introduced you to yourself, but also say, there's a way beyond this. This is what you're called to. This is what your wound is pushing you towards. He knew that he was beloved. He knew he was loved. He goes on questioning and wanting to claim that all his life, that empty space inside of himself. One of the most stunning phrases I remember reading early on in Henry is his contention that what is most deeply personal is most universal. And I had never encountered that way of understanding ourselves from the inside out and then against a global perspective. I was really thrilled to be able to um, come personally to know myself as God's beloved because of Henry's writings. And my passion now is to help people to die well, to help people to not be afraid to die. I was uh, in a house of studies for candidates uh, for the Redemptorists, and I, I think I just chanced upon one of his books um, and uh, fell in love with his writing. And then later, when I was, uh, when I was uh, further along the path, I, I discovered the way of the heart. Uh, and um, that was a game changer for me. That, that book on, on uh, solitude and silence and prayer was kind of the foundation of my entire spiritual life. Really reflecting back, everything that I'm doing now in my life professionally is because of this personal transformation that happened in my heart during my research. Um, and Henry's a big part of that. The Second Vatican Council in its document on liturgy, the sort of the primal 
phrase uh, that we've been working on in the liturgical renewal for the past 50 years has been to promote full, conscious, and active participation of the people. And for a lot of people, that's meant in recent years, just make sure you sing loud or you pray your responses loud. Henry's influence, for me at least, has been in both the music that I create for sung prayer or how I try to teach about liturgy is that we need to live loudly, we need to serve loudly, we need to be loud disciples. Not, again, not, not screaming in, in terms of volume, but doing it with passion, with a sense of exuberance and joy. There's a story about Henry out for dinner with people before he died saying, after he died, he wanted his spirit to be accessible to those who loved him and those who he loved. And when I read that, I felt so totally held and in, in line with his spirit that I know his spirit is alive and well in the work that I'm able to do and being a vessel and, and letting Henry work through me. Those were some participants at the Way to the Heart conference in June 2016. Um, celebrating the life and work of Henry now. And now a lot of those people um, only knew Henry through his writings. And what struck me was that all of them said that reading Henry Nouwen was like reading yourself, that he seemed to know exactly what you're going through. Um, what do you think, Joe, what do you think is what appeals most about Henry's writings to people? I think Henry's fundamental gift was the sharing of his human vulnerability. And Henry, through all 40 books, in one way or another, um, was honest and authentic and with a real integrity, sharing kind of his ups and downs and what he lived. Yeah. And he didn't hide any of that. Maybe he shared too much of it, <laughs> Yeah, you could say too. Right. but. But I think that's what really connected with people in terms of their experience was reflected in what Henry uh, wrote and what he said in right. terms of his different talks and lectures. Yeah. So, um, and it's Henry's search, I think Henry's search for God and Henry's search for um, that utter fundamental conviction that I am loved. Yeah. And yes. that's the basic struggle we all have. Mm -hmm. Um, that's connected to our sense of happiness. If we know we're loved, we will have a happy yeah. life. And Henry really searched for that, and I think uh, found that more and more the more he lived at, uh, yeah. at large. And you would say, would you say, Sue, that that's, you find that in all his books? I think it's in all his books, uh, sometimes a little more vividly described. You know, Henry had a, a very brilliant intelligence but he also had a very sensitive heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a bit of a rare gift of a uh, really quick mind and, and intelligent, but, but covered with a, a deep sensitivity and, and feeling everything. Mm -hmm. So his ability with this intelligence was to put into words what the feelings were without asking anybody to pity him because he was vulnerable. Right. He said, I, I have to bandage my wounds, mm -hmm. but then I can talk about that mm -hmm. and people can identify with that. But he said, I don't want them to look at me. I want them to look at themselves in front of God. Uh -huh. you know? And so that's the thing that came through in every book. And you're, you know, you're reading and you say, well, I understand this. This, this makes sense well, to me. I've I'm experienced yes. this, so I know yeah. it. I know it in my experience, not just in my mind, yeah. but I know it in my sensitivity. Yeah. What is your favorite book? I like two books. I like okay. uh, The Prodigal Son, yes. uh, and I like The Adam Book, because that's Henry's struggle okay. to look after a very uh, beautiful and a very um, I would say a, a disabled man mm -hmm. who we, Joe asked him at the, at the very first thing, would you help Adam with his morning routine? Henry was terrified. Okay. And, uh, but he, again, he describes how, he said, I was afraid going into the room of this stranger every morning. Right. And they asked me, and why did they ask me to look after him? He's, he's severely disabled and I don't know anything. And even though they came to help me, I didn't understand. I kept asking, why are you asking me to do this? And mm -hmm. they said, because we want you to get to know Adam. Yeah. And then gradually he gets to know Adam, who becomes his teacher, his guide, and his mentor, right. you know. I, 
I was going to say, I guess maybe we should, there might be people who are not familiar with the large community. So the large community is for, for adults with developmental disabilities. And so they are the core members and assistants, like Henry would have been an assistant who lives in community with the core members, helping them, as you described. Yeah, with sharing their daily, daily life, life together. Yeah, living together. Know, yeah. Basically, making yeah, peanut butter and jelly Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite book, Joe? I would say the Prodigal Son book. Yeah, so that's and, the return to the and re return, return of the prodigal. prodigal Son. Yeah, and I think, I think that's the favorite of a lot of people. Yes, and and just the whole um, articulation of the need for forgiveness and mercy. Yeah, and how Henry um, discovered that in his own life, and how he identified with each of those two sons, but in the end identified with the father in terms of welcoming right. welcoming people. Would you say that it, when, when he's described as, as a great spiritual thinker, I mean, it doesn't seem that, that it's, there's great spirituality there other than that ability to be present. Is, is it as simple as that? Would, would you say, Sue? He was searching. He was passionate. He was always un, unsatisfied. Okay. So, so that mm. led him to pursue both the spiritual, but to put experience with, with the, exper the um, spirituality, and that's mm -hmm. what, what he was a master at. He, mm -hmm. he could spiritually interpret for us, going through the, the mystery of suffering, uh, giving our death away, that's a new concept, give your yes. death so that your, your loved ones will mourn with joy and they won't mourn with, you know, just uh, hopelessness. Yes. So he had all this, the spirituality was put on this experience of, of suffering and, and looking at it from a spiritual perspective. Yeah. At the conference, we also tried to find out what it was about Henry that was so appealing. And this is what we found out. He taught us how to be with people who died and were dying. And that's a... It's something we all have to live with all the time and we don't. We ignore it, especially in North America, we ignore it. And he would have us be with people as they passed and spending time with them and telling stories. And like, I remember going in when his secretary was dying, I said, I don't really know Carmen that much. I don't know how to be here. And he goes, it's nothing. You just sit and you tell her stories and you tell her what you think of her and her love. And it's just so simple. But it's something we don't do. In our society, we avoid death, and we don't sit with people who are dying. And I've had the joy of years since then of spending time with people dying, and that's a gift. Henry's writing might begin in the mind and the head, but it moves down into the heart. And I think that um, when I read uh, any kind of spiritual writing, I can't help but go at it that way. That's just the way my brain and my DNA works spiritually that you know, it becomes a part of a prayerful, holy conversation that I have. Um, and I believe that's what prayer is, is having a conversation with God. He was present. Um, like, he could be scattered all over the place, but when he was present, he was there. So he would have the intensity, and his eyes would just barrel into you and then go right down to your heart and find out what's there and grab it. And you'd go, no, thank you, Henry. <laughs> that thought is my own. <laughs> um, but he, he would dig in there, and he was so present. And anything could be going on outside, you wouldn't know it, because he was just right in the moment. And he always had the hand gesture of in the moment. Uh, people have said, you know, God's in that moment of being connected. And so Henry could bring that out in people so well. He made no pretense about having it together. He did not have it together. And that was so absolutely clear. And I think that's what people really loved about him, that he could be his disheveled self and uh, still be out there and traveling and staying on the journey. He didn't do it from a place of believing he had arrived or gotten there. He was always on the journey. Really, it was so fruitful, his relationship with us. And it was mutually transformative, actually. The community continues to grow out of the, the gifts that he gave us. Again, those were some participants at the Way of the Heart Conference celebrating the life of Henry Nouwen in June 2016. What do you think, Joe? What do you think is Henry Nouwen's legacy? Well, the obvious legacy is his writings. It was over 40 books. But I think 
beyond that, it was the way Henry touched the lives of thousands and thousands of people. I mean, he was an extraordinary teacher. He was an extraordinary pastor, a counselor. Um, and so my favorite reality of Henry is just how compassionate he was. He really touched and changed the lives of many, many people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what um, I'll certainly remember is those one-on-one -on -one encounters or in front of a big group, how, how he shared his life story and his mm -hmm. struggles and his search for God, how that impacted um, the lives of so many other people. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Sue? I agree with Joe 100%. I, I would say this ability to uh, enter into something that really is a deep human mystery, and that is suffering. Mm. And that's something that Henry experienced. He was a suffering man. He was anguished. And in some way, he didn't let that control him, but he found the pathway to live something with integrity which made him more and more a, what I would call a beautiful human being. In other words, he wasn't complaining and, and making us feel sorry for him. In other words, he was saying, we have to look at this, we have to unwrap the gift of this and see what it means to us. And for me, I think he was a, certainly a, a mentor for me and I would risk to say that he was responsible for me taking hold of my life and wanting to become more fully human and wanting to be transformed into the image of how God made me. So it's a very, very huge gift which I received. Yes. It wasn't he alone, but it, it was a lot because we were together for, for many years. Mm -hmm. Now in the clip, Siobhan describes him always being present and that he even had a, an action that he always, oh, yes, like that he yes. was always <laughs> present. What is that image, Joe, that of Henry that you always have in your mind that you will always remember? For me, it's how Henry celebrated the Eucharist every day at daybreak and thousands of times in his life as a priest. Yes. But he had these beautiful huge hands and the way he just lifted up the host, lifted up the chalice, um, I'll never forget it. And, and it's the way, Hen the fundamental way Henry created community yes. was through the celebration of the Eucharist and inviting people into that mystery. Mm. And he did that in such an extraordinary way. Yeah, Sue, what, do you have an image that you will always remember? I just, I, I would say that I remember that when I saw others and when I talked to Henry, I had his full attention. It was as though there was nobody else, even though we might be in a crowd. If I was asking something or explaining, I had his full attention. The other thing that I will remember is his hand of blessing. He loved to bless people. He liked to put his hand on somebody's shoulder. He liked to send them away saying, God speed, God go with you. And I'll always remember that. Mm. Well, thank you. We've been remembering the life and work of Henry Nouwen on the 20th anniversary of his death. With me are two people who knew Henry, who lived with him. They knew him well and they remember him Fondly, they live with him at the Larch Daybreak Community in Richmond Hill, Ontario. Sister Sue Mosteller and Joe Egan, thank you so much for coming to share a little bit about Henry with us today. Thank, thank you. you for asking. Now, if you want to find out more about Henry now, and I hope that you're, we've piqued your interest in, in, in finding that one book. If you're looking for great spiritual reading that is easy to read, look up Henry Nouwen. You don't need to go far. The Henry Nouwen Society has all the information that you need. So that's henrynouwen.org, and it's N-O-U-W-E-N, henrynouwen.org. Um, and that's where you can find out everything you need to know about Henry Nouwen, including that book that you need to read right now. Um, and if you have any questions or comments about anything that you hear in this program, you know it's easy to reach us via email, focus at salt and light TV, or reach us via social media through Facebook or Twitter. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next time on Catholic Focus. <laughs>